How's it going guys? Angus here from Maker's Muse and in this video we're going to take another look at the Olo. Yes, I know the other night I recorded a video about the Olo Kickstarter. I was very tired and I had looked at the campaign but I hadn't looked at the FAQs they added after I looked at the campaign. Um, and I made some assumptions about resin printers which a lot of you have quickly corrected me on. And I've done a lot of research into this company and the, the actual technology itself and kind of brought things up to speed. And I've brought up a lot of other questions. It's a bit like going down the rabbit hole. The more, the deeper I go, the more I'm finding. And it's still a little bit confusing. But the really interesting thing is Olo got in touch with me and answered some of my questions and queries as well. So I figured I'd answer, I'd go through there. Um, their answers to me through with you guys and I would go through the things I've found about the campaign and yeah I mean things look a little bit more promising definitely more legit and the fact that Olo got back in touch with me is a huge level of, of respect because it means that you know they're answering questions and that sort of thing but at the same time there's a few there's still a few big concerns um, about the whole idea of these daylight resins and that kind of thing. Anyway, enough rambling. First thing, I just want to go to the email they sent me. So basically, they've given me a little bit of background of this company, Solido 3D, and it did ring a bell. So back when I was first interested in 3D printing, there was this uh, technology, which is LOM, lay, uh, Laminated Object Manufacturing, I believe it stands for. And that was this thing, which I remember ages ago, the Solido SD300. And it, it takes layers of clear film and then pretty much glues them together, a bit like the M core machines do with paper. Uh, but it's a really old 3D printing technology. This was around before 3D printing was a big thing, like I think in the 2000s it sort of came out, that kind of thing. Um, but I didn't really hear much about this company, so the fact that they're referencing Solido 3D is quite interesting. And I found this which was a post in 2014 or 3 d print industry saying what's going on with Solido <laughs> or Solido and it turns out they went bust basically and the assets got bought by someone else which is kind of interesting so it's very quite quite complicated and even in this article they can't really tell what's going on <laughs> there's still strange noises bubbling from what was thought to be its corpse interesting words um, and what I thought was interesting is this is the website now, uh, you know, as of 2016, and using the Wayback Machine, this is the website in, uh, when was it, 2010, so six years ago. Uh, so six years ago, now. Six years ago, now. The only thing that's changed is the logo. Nothing else has appeared to change. So it appears to me that that's a dead site. I mean, you've still, still got Scott Harris in, endorsing this machine that's ancient anyway so there's that weird side of things and i'm not quite sure how solido 3d fits in with uh, the olo as such but then there's this foundry digitali which is this italian digital factory kind of thing and it seems to be a network um and they're, they're mentioning things like was 3d which i looked up that's a delta robot actually delta sorry delta 3d printer actually looks quite good uh, i found some videos of it online Mute that. There you go. So it actually looks, you know, decent for a Delta. No, no, no complaints there. Uh, they've linked a website D Shape, which appears to be a non-existent domain. Interesting. And uh, this Tesla EMS, which is again some sort of electronics, looks like flow soldering or yeah, some sort of electronic assembly machine. Which is cool. Um, so they're saying it's a bottom-up network and it's lots of different enterprises in one. So the guys in the comments section on Kickstarter have been really quick to pick up this photocentric 3D uh, daylight sensitive resins. They're like curing resins. And as far as anyone can tell, that's the resin they're using. I mean, they don't reference it, but there's all these weird similarities in terms of use and in terms of when the term was coined, you know, daylight, re daylight resins. Uh, and I got in touch with some of my some of my friends in the 3D printing industry who have actually tested out these resins, these photocentric 3D resins. 
And yeah, they do work. They cure really fast, actually way too fast if you put them into a regular UV uh, DLP or SLA printer, like within half a second, and it actually curls and overheats. But apparently these resins, when you take them out into sunlight, are like destroyed almost instantly. They get, the best best word would be, would be they get sunburnt. They get UV damaged extremely fast and degrade. So, so much so that apparently if you take the liquid out and it's in your hand outside, the liquid will cure, it will harden and pretty much burn your hand because of the, the reaction and the heat generated. From what I've been told, which is interesting. And I guess... That goes back to what they're, ask, they're answering my concerns about the, the resin properties and the print time. They're saying that because of the technology that they're using these daylight resins, it needs about 22 to 32 seconds per layer with an iPhone 6. So obviously sunlight has much more light output than a iPhone screen. So I don't know how you could use these resins outside of a dark room, to be honest. Um, and then just going back to the resins, yes, I know I did talk about the clear bottles and in the FAQ which I did miss they say they're using black bottles but I still think it's a little bit deceiving to the public to show clear bottles in their campaign and being the skeptic that I am it's like an afterthought then saying oh but they are black anyway that's just me being me and yes view while, view while printing I did say that you can't see the print while it's printing and that would just be a limitation of this technology. You obviously can't have light leaking into the print volume. So, yep, fair enough. It has to do that to work. But I still don't like the idea of not being able to see a 3D print because working with them every day, yes, they are FDM machines I tend to work with. You know, they fail. And if you can't see your four-hour resin print, how do you know it hasn't failed in the first 10 minutes? You don't. Anyway, moving on. Video realism. This one got me. So I did comment saying a lot of these Kickstarter projects show mock-ups and they're saying uh, that the only, that what, what you see in the videos is exactly the same as what the backers will receive. Okay, fine. The machine may look the same as what the backers are receiving and they're saying it is pretty much, they're, they're claiming it's functional. But I'm going to go to a few of these choice images. This is one of the images I've got for the black resin. And that's clearly laser cut. That's not 3D printed. <laughs> uh, again, not too sure on that one. That may be resin printed. That's clearly laser cut and bent into shape. So I really, really want to see from the Erlo team, I want to see some more prints that are proven to come off this prototype they've got. I don't want to see any more faked mock-ups. And they are promising that in the next few days, I'll get that back to that in a second. They're promising that in the next few days that they will be adding videos and photos. I will report on those and I really, really want to see it because, yeah, they're right. We want the backers to feel confident. I want to feel confident that this product is the next big thing for 3D printing because that would be cool. $99, anyone can get into 3D printing and print small things in a skin safe resin you can just wash off with water. I absolutely would be so behind that. And I want to believe, and it is getting closer, and I am getting much more credibility from this company now that they've got in touch with me and I've done some research, but there's still concerns. Final concern, it's an Italian-based firm, from what I can understand. The domain was registered in Italy. Uh, but if you go to the biography, this is where I get a little bit iffy. Finding any name to do with this project was really difficult, like really hard to track down a name. So in terms of the actual project itself, there is this one name because you need a you need a registered name to launch a Kickstarter because Kickstarter is quite protective. It's got this, you know, Giasomo for Nassini, which sounds really Italian. And I searched this name and the only guy I can turn up is this this sort of college guy in at the University of Maryland, and I'll blur his, blur his face out because I don't want to put him on the internet. But yeah, it just seems to be some other random guy, which is weird. Um, but he is in the States, and you need to have someone in the States to launch a Kickstarter campaign. So I remember back when Australia wasn't 
listed as a country you could launch Kickstarters from, we would have to, well, not me personally, but people in Australia would have to get a contact in the States with a physical US address to launch a Kickstarter. And I think that's what they've had to do. So let's just go back to their press release and you need an address for that. So this is the address they've got listed for the press release. I would almost guarantee that this is a just a postal address. Well, they've got someone just taking mail for them. Oh, come on. Well, the internet's just failed horribly. Anyway, <laughs> uh, I would say that that's just a postal address and the actual team behind Olo is in Italy somewhere. But moving on again, a lot of people were concerned as to their claim that they got a blue ribbon at um, at this Maker Fair in New York. So, you know, that's their picture with the blue ribbon. That image there, it, it, it's either a really, really nicely finished print or it's a render, but because it's got the ribbon on it, I will say it's a nicely finished print. And if we take it to this uh, microfabricator, that actually would have been from somewhere else, initially 3D print industry article, there you go. That's the Olo with a blue ribbon from Maker Faire. So it turns out these are just given out by the editors to any project they think is cool. It's not really that special. They give out a lot of them. But here we go. So, you know, we've got a face to put to this this thing. And going into it, turns out this guy's called Filippo Moroni, which is awesome. We've actually got someone to identify with the Olo campaign, which is great. And going on to the Olo Facebook, they've got some features from the, the Maker Faire, which is cool. And you've got the guy showing off his, his printer and you've got some competitions and you know, example prints that are supposedly done, which is awesome. And that adds, again, a lot of credibility to this project because we've got someone we can track down who has taken it to a physical place and demonstrated it. But why his name isn't anywhere on the campaign for Olo... I don't know. I don't really understand. He's in some of the videos, but he's not on any of this. And one other thing I was a little bit concerned about is the, the film, where the interface layer between your smartphone and that first layer of resin. Apparently that is going to be replaceable, and a lot of people have been asking about it, and they can't quite give an estimate about how often it needed to be replaced, but they have considered it, which is good too. And also... There's uh, a guy on the comments da, 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 under the name of uh, yeah, Elias of JJ. Thank you so much, man, for calling me out on what I was saying. Um, yeah, I did actually mean the Pebble campaign, not the Pirate 3D campaign that raised 10 million. The Pirate 3D only raised a bit over 1 million, but it did still leave a lot of people without printers. So that was pretty disappointing. And a lot of people are saying, have you seen the Peachy printer, Angus? You know, it's another really low-cost resin printer. Do you guys realize the Peachy was on Kickstarter three years ago? And I still can't find a review of it anywhere. <laughs> so that's why I make these videos, guys. I do not come out, out here to openly slag at Olo and say, you know, it's a horrible company, this and that. I have just seen so many people get burnt on Kickstarter that I am so skeptical. I need this proof. I need the Olo team to show me prints that they've done off the machine. No, you know, no just single time lapse. That's one other quick thing um, on their, their page. This is always alarm bells for me. Their time lapse video has the likes and dislikes disabled. That's always a real big no-no if you're on YouTube. It, it shows dishonesty and the comments are disabled. And that's a massive no-no for YouTube. You never disable comments. You want people to show what they think by posting in the comments. To me, that shows that something, they're trying to hide something. That's what it says to me. So thanks for watching, guys. Hope you enjoyed this follow-up video of the Olo 3D printer. As I said, it's not something I would back. I'm not looking for a small resin printer. But if you are looking to back it, there's a lot of credibility that has, that has been found. And if they do put up videos of the machine actually working, uh, without a time lapse and actually pictures, I will definitely be doing follow up videos on that. If you enjoyed this video on 3D printing, want to see future 3D printings on making future 3D printing videos on Makers Muse, don't forget to subscribe. It does help me, and I'll see you again very shortly. Catch you later.